Hi, and welcome to More Human, More Resources, the HR podcast for entrepreneurs. I'm Vicki Brown, your host and CEO of Vidomineo Enterprises. As a serial entrepreneur, I understand that having the right expert help has been critical to my success. That's why I'm dedicated to telling you, in plain language, what's going on in the world of HR that might impact your business and what you need to do about it with real actionable tips to help you master that list of must-dos and grow your leadership muscle. First things first, the information contained in this podcast is provided for general purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Your decision to adopt or not adopt any practice or procedure mentioned in this podcast is solely yours and we bear no responsibility for the outcome. We urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. And with that, let's get into the show. You're listening to Season 2, Episode 6. In this week's episode, our question of the day is vacation time or PTO. Which is better, and what's the difference? Well, as you might guess, different states have different rules around this. So for now, I'll focus on the Golden State, California. In California, you can have sick time and vacation time, or you can lump them all together as PTO or paid time off. Now, the term PTO can be a bit confusing because people use it two different ways. Sometimes they just mean the literal definition of paid time off, meaning any time the employee is taking that's paid by the company. This could include sick time, vacation time, holidays, and or personal days. On the other hand, they might use the term PTO as the title of a specific type of time off. For instance, we don't have sick time and vacation time, we just have PTO. Now in that context, they're saying a PTO program has replaced the separate other types of time off that are usually available. So isn't it just easier to have PTO and deal with tracking one thing and forget it? Well, it sounds simple, but of course, it's not that simple at all. In California, you're required to provide paid sick time for your employees. Now that sick time has specific rules around it, the minimum amount they can get, the fact that it doesn't get paid out when they leave the company, and other rules around how it can be used. Vacation time, on the other hand, is considered wages earned. Now that's a really important distinction. In fact, I'll say it again. In California, vacation time is considered wages earned. And for you and me as employers, that means once it's earned by the employee, they can't lose it. That's why a use it or lose it policy is illegal in California. Also, employers have to enter vacation amounts on their accounting books as a liability. Honestly, it's because the powers that be want to be sure that if everyone stops working for you, that you have the money to pay out all the vacation that's been earned. That wages thing also informs how you manage vacation. Some, and in some cases all, of it has to roll over into the next year. And again, since it's a liability for you, the cost of the days increases as the employee salary does. But on the bright side, you as the employer can determine when vacation can be taken. So remember all that about vacation because we'll wait for it. If you go to a PTO policy, California considers all that time as vacation time, meaning it all falls under the vacation rules. Yep. That's right, even though you most probably rolled in the sick time policy totals, it's all under the vacation guidelines now. And not only does it have to meet the vacation rules, it also has to meet the accrual rules of sick time. Now, generally that part isn't much of an issue because most vacation policies accrue at a rate much higher than the required sick time minimum accrual of one hour for every 30 hours worked. But where I've seen this out of alignment is when a vacation policy says something like, you start accruing on your first day, but you can't take any time until you've been there for a year. Well, that's counter to the sick time guidelines. So if you have a PTO policy, it has to at least meet the sick time rules. By the way, the you can't take vacation until you've been here for a year thing has its own issues, but I'll do a deep dive on that in a later episode. 
So, having said all that, PTO is generally more expensive to the employer. You have to keep the time on the books, and it rolls over and gets more expensive as salaries go up. You can probably tell I'm not a huge fan of PTO, but one thing is in its favor. It's relatively easy to track. After all, it's only one bucket, and everything comes out of that one bucket. So, if you do decide to convert from sick time and vacation policies into one PTO policy, here are three top things to think about. First, any vacation employees have on the books will stay on the books. Just because you're changing the policy doesn't mean they can lose anything. What you can do is cap the accrual amount and work out a schedule where they sort of use it down over a period of time. For example, I have a client converting to PTO and some of their employees have 500 hours of vacation time on the books. And no, don't ask me why they have so many hours. We're just dealing with the situation as it's presented to us. Now, while these 500 hours will stay in place, the company can say that they're capping PTO at 200 hours. By the way, another thing to keep in mind is that the cap can't simply be one year's worth. The courts have seen through that ruse. So back to the cap. If they cap PTO at 200 hours, the people with 500 hours won't start accruing again until they have used more than 300 hours because that will bring them below the cap. The next thing to consider is that you really should add in the sick time to the PTO bucket. Sure, it's possible for you to create a PTO program and do away with sick time altogether, as long as you're meeting all the accrual guidelines, etc. But that will really annoy your employees. Why? Because to them, you're starting a new program and taking some time away from them. That annoys employees, so we don't recommend it. And finally, think about communication. How you sell the program will define success or failure. Be clear about the numbers and what's happening. Prepare individual statements for each employee. Communicate in a variety of ways, a written announcement, maybe a video, and also consider doing a kickoff meeting. Remember, different people take in information differently. You have to meet them where they are. So, if you're considering a PTO policy, look carefully at the numbers, maybe have a chat with your favorite HR consultant, and clearly outline the pros and cons. If you found this information helpful, please leave a review and tell a friend. Thanks for spending the time. Until next week, same time, same place.